Hi everybody, welcome to a new Python tutorial. Today we're going to talk about threading and multiprocessing in Python. So with threading and multiprocessing you can run code in parallel and speed up your code. And in this tutorial we will learn what is the difference between a process and a thread, the advantages and disadvantages of both, how and why threads are limited by the GIL and how we can easily use the built-in threading and multiprocessing module to create and run multiple threads or processes. So let's start with the difference between a process and a thread. So a process is an instance of a program. So for example, if I'm running one Firefox browser, then this is one process. Or if I'm running one Python interpreter, then this is one process. And a thread, on the other hand, is an entity within a process. So a process can have multiple threads inside. Processes take advantage of multiple CPUs and cores. So you can execute your code on multiple CPUs in parallel. Processes have a separate memory space. So memory is not shared but between processes and they are great for CPU bound processing. So this means for example if you have to if you have a large amount of data and have to do a lot of expensive computations for them then with multiprocessing you can process the data on different CPUs and this way speed up your code. A new process is started independently uh, oh started independently from other processes and processes are easily interruptible and killable and there's one gil for each process so this avoids the gil limitation and I will come to the gil or global interpreter lock in a second. Now um, there are some disadvantages so a process is heavyweight so it takes more it takes a lot of memory and starting a process is slower than starting a thread and since processes have a separate memory space the um, memory sharing is not so easy so the so-called inter-process communication is more complicated and now on the other hand um, threads so as I said a thread is an entity within a process that can be scheduled for execution and it's also known as a lightweight process and a process can spawn multiple threads. So all threads within a process share the same memory and they are lightweight so starting a thread is faster than starting a process and they are great for I.O. bound tasks so this means input output tasks so for example when your program has to talk to slow devices like a hard drive or a network connection then with threading your program can use the time waiting for these devices and then intelligently switch to other threads and do the processing in the meantime. So this is how it, you can speed up your code with um, threading. But on the other hand, threading is limited by the GIL. So the GIL allows only one thread at a time. So there is no actual parallel computation in multi-threading. So threading has no effect for CPU bound tasks. And they are not interruptible and kill killable. So be careful with memory leaks here. And since uh, threads share the same memory you have to be careful with race conditions and a race condition occurs where when two or more threads want to modify the same variable at the same time so then this can easily cause bugs or crashes and yeah that's the difference between processes and threads and now I mentioned a couple of times the GIL so let's talk about the GIL and this is also known as the global interpreter lock and this is a lock in Python that allows only one thread at a time to execute and this is very controversial in the Python community but why is it needed 
And this is needed because in C Python, so C Python is the reference Python implementation that you get when you download and install Python from python.org. So the gil is needed because in C Python there is a memory management that is not thread safe. So in C Python there is a technique that is called reference counting for memory that is used for memory management and this means that objects created in Python have a reference count variable that keeps track of the number of references that point to the object and when this count reaches zero the memory occupied by the object can be released and the problem now in multi-threading is that this reference count variable needs, needs protection from race conditions where two threads increase or decrease the value simultaneously. So if this happens, it can either um, leak, it can cause leaked memory that is never released, or it can incorrectly release the memory while a reference to that object still exists. So this is the reason um, why they introduced the gill and a couple of ways to avoid the gill if you want to use parallel computing is to use multiprocessing or you can use a different free threaded python implementation and not c python so there's for example chython or iron python or you can use python python as a wrapper for third party libraries and this is the way it's it works in NumPy or the SciPy modules. So they are basically just wrappers in Python that then call code that is executed in C. So yeah, that's enough theory and now let's jump right into code. So let's start with multiprocessing and for this you simply say from multiprocessing import a the process oh sorry and now I create a list called processes where I will store all my processes and now I define a number of processes and a good number usually is the number of CPUs on your machine so you can say import OS and then we say num process processes equals OS dot CPU count so on my machine there are four different CPUs and then I will create the processes so create processes so I will say for I in range num processes p equals a new process and this takes two important arguments now the first one is target and the target function and so this is a callable object or a function that is then executed by this program uh, process so I have to define a function here so I say let's define this up here so let's say in this example let's say def square numbers and here I will say for i in range 100 I will simply say i times i so this is a dummy example it's basically not useful but just for how to show you to show you how to use different processes so this is the function that my process should execute so I say target equals square numbers and if my function here has some arguments so then I would also need to specify arcs equals and then as a tuple give the arguments here so in this case I don't need them so now I created my process and then I say processes dot append my process 
and now I want to start each process so I say for P in processes and then I say P dot start and then I also have to join the processes so I say for P in processes P dot join so this means that I want to wait for a process to finish and while I'm waiting I am blocking the main thread so here I'm waiting for all processes to finish and I block the main thread until these processes are finished so now at the end I can for example simply print um, and main and I will only reach this point when all processes are done and now if I execute this let's for example let's also import time and here just to show you the different processes I will wait some time and say time dot sleep 0 0.1 and now I am having a look at the activity manager or the task manager so here I can filter for processes so I say I filter for Python and I s you can see that I've already two Python processes running they all have a different process ID and they all it's also shown how many threads are inside my process so now if I'm executing this Python file then we will see what will happen so it takes a couple of seconds and, and now we see five Python processes coming up so this is the main process and then the four process processes I created here and now after a couple of times after this is finished they will disappear again so we can see that there are actually different processes now running on my machine and this is how we can use multiprocessing and now let's talk about multi-threading so the threading API is very similar to the multi-processing uh, API so here I say from threading import thread and then here let's call these threads and num now I call this number of threads and let's simply say I want to have 10 different threads and then for I in num threads now I create a thread and this takes the same arguments so it also has to define a target and if my target has some arguments then I would also have to specify the arcs here and then I say threads dot append my thread then I will start each thread so I will say for t in threads t dot start and also join them so I will say for t in threads T dot join and now let's have a look at the activity manager again now if I'm running this Python file then we will see takes a couple of seconds now we will see one process coming up with 11 threads inside so the main threads and the 10 child threads that I created here and now processing is finished and uh, the threads disappear again so this is how you can use the threading module and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and in the next two videos I'll go into more detail about both the threading and the multi-processing module so see you soon